right, we're back in the office. Um, we've had a few complaints because people said they can't hear the audio. So, Joel, sitting here, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, we're trying to get ourselves mic'd up this time. <laughs> he's, decided, he's decided to be a TV presenter. Okay, we're going to talk about the inverted. You've unboxed it, you've got it out of the box. And I said to you, please, first of all, I will absolutely say, what we're towing now is really for qualified electrical engineers. So there's two parts. We're going to be deadly serious on this. You connect um, a cable um, with a plug on the thing on the end. You use the CT cord connected. The CT cord at this point is not important. But the reason for doing this, and please, I emphasize again and again and again, make sure the unit is grounded. And you can see on the connections inside the inverter here which is the first two, which is live, which is live and neutral, ground on the bottom. Make sure you've got the ground connection. And again, I will keep repeating and repeating for testing this and for setting this up is basically for engineers. It's not for people who are non-qualified because the last thing is I want somebody frying themselves on the inverter. So once you've plugged it in, and I'm saying be familiar with this, you want to actually understand and one of the things is connecting it to the internet because that's very important. Um, the unit comes with the data logger or supplied and Joel is the, is the expert. In fact, Joel actually was working on the software for the data logger. So Joel, just explain very briefly how to program it onto, it, onto the unit. So it's as simple as you open up your, your plant, you click create plant at the top right. Now it'll ask you to scan a QR code. You scan that there, it'll pick it up straight away. And it will just, you can then program it, it's very it easy. It walks you through it. it, so it takes you through the setup process, you add the plant name, you add all the data logger information, the location, what size inverter you've got, what size array you've got, and it walks you through the process step by step until you're, until you're online. And so it. familiarize yourself with using using a data logger. The data logger is the thing that communicates to the, the app, and that's very important. Joel's actually got some videos online which explain the whole thing and how to use it. Some people do ask us about the various things on the data log and what all the screens mean. There is a lot of information online, and we probably give too much information. Um, and obviously, as you become more and more familiar with the product, you can, can control the settings, you can do everything on the data logger. Anyway, I'm not gonna go so much. I was talking about the initial inverter. We take the inverter out of the box, First thing is you'll notice, and depending on the model, this is this is the baby, the 3.6. So this one has actually got six terminals. Um, and in fact, if you sh if, come bring the camera in here, bring the camera. So you see here, the first two is generator or we call auxiliary. The second two is load, which is actually the UPS. And the third two is the grid. Understand it's not an in and an out. The grid is not the grid connection and the load is the out. It's one connection. The grid is both in and out connection. So just bear in mind of that. So most applications, you will only connect the one. If you're gonna put a UPS, and we'll talk about UPS, uninterrupted power supply. So if the power failure fails, your lights go out, this can keep your lights on. Um, and that's up to the rated value of the inverter. So that's, that's one of the features, but it would require more complicated wiring because you have to put an additional consumer unit in for your essential loads and your non-essential loads will connect to your existing consumer unit. So that's really important. So one of the things is I said to you is familiarize yourself with the product. You familiarize with the connections. Um, you can, you, you'll see there's lots and lots of connectors on here. Um, in, on this model, we've got five connectors. Um, so you've got the connections. If you're going to parallel, so two of the connections are paralleling. So if you're going to put three of these together or if you want to put an additional one next to it, you can use, the, use that connection. And obviously there's an in and out, so if you, you, you will cascade and so on and so forth. Um, you've also got the connection, which is for the CAN bus connection, which goes to the battery. And I showed the other day, I showed one here and it was connected to the battery here. So the canvas from goes from here to the inverter here. Most applications, that's all you need to worry about is the canvas. But what I keep saying to you is familiarize yourself with the software. Let me come and have a look at the software. I'm providing our cameraman, Tom, who's acting as cameraman. And we've got the reflections of the lights. You can hold the, hold the camera very still. So on here, 
you can see very clearly it's got my name as you can actually put your name in here here um, there's no battery connected but if I touch the button here you see a, a flow chart and this shows you what everything is going on so it sees the MPPTs you see the, U the auxiliary the UPS and the power all comes in here the inverter the center part and there's little arrows will show you where the power is flowing that's less important it's more important now is to understand the programming simple programming if I press the cog at the top it comes to this navigation page go on to the basic setting let's look at the basic settings first of all so here you set your time the time can be set automatically from the data logger if you want to but this actually sets your time um, obviously a.m. p.m. but you can actually click here to synchronize it and non synchronize it here's your display and it says my name and here I can put in whatever name so I can enter the name of my company and you can preset this you can do this before you get to the site so if my company uh, I can put in whatever uh, I, I can change it and I just might look up and down so I, you know if I added something um, I just put my names for argument's sake but I put anything else in here and then always press OK so if I go back onto it it will remember if I don't press OK then it's a problem you obviously see here there's some language options so the unit actually has some languages so it can operate in Spanish French or Portuguese this little one here is the bleeper people often say the bleeper is <laughs> the bleeper drives them more because when you first power it up you've got an area of beep 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 and I give you go please how can I turn the bleeper off the thing's driving me crazy well actually here's a secret bleepers drive me crazy I hate them so if you initially if you switch off the bleeper here and just untick it it'll be ticked normally um, untick it press OK and then the bleeper is off uh, my fingers a bit big and escape it's it, it's set so there's this basic settings there are another thing on the basic settings you'll see here factory reset um self-check don't need to worry about the test mode don't need to worry about there are some other features you can also lock the inverter so if you wanted to put a child lock it has a child lock facility but for now i'm not going to worry too much about child lock about the reset uh, the factory reset if you do operate a factory reset, it's not a complete factory reset. It resets it back to the default settings of the software that you put in. So when you factory reset, it doesn't go back to the original, original, original. It will go back to the version that you've changed it. So if you put a new version software in and there are, it will then adapt the settings that you had before. So that if you've upgraded it and you've made all settings and then you upgrade it, those settings will remain. If you want to reset all the settings back to factory default, then you can go on that, that function and you can reset back to your factory, factory default, but the software version will absolutely remain. Okay, other things to consider then, your battery here. Most people are gonna be using lithium battery. So if you click on lithium battery, if it's a single cell, it's 100 amp per hour. If you're using one of our KTEL cells, they are a C rating 0.5. That means it can charge a half the amper hour rating or discharge half the amper hour rating per battery. So if I've got one battery, it's 100 amper hour, which is a 5.2 kilowatt battery. That means it can charge or discharge at 50 amps. If I put two batteries in parallel, it can charge and discharge at 100 amps and so on and so forth. It can up to obviously the limitation of the inverter. So on a 3.6, it's got a charge and discharge of around 75 amps, depending on your settings. So you, you, if you're going to single battery, you need to program the inverter to 50 amps, you need to cap it. If you're using a, one of our BYD cells, it can go to C1, it can go larger, but generally I would always try and keep it at 0.5, even if the batteries can handle more, because it will increase the longevity of the batteries. So come and have a look here. So here, You've got your battery settings. This is your charge and discharge. You see it's 100 amp and it's set from the, go back on my finger. Here, now I go on to the battery charge. This is the battery charge if you're charging from the grid or the generator. This is nothing to do with the solar. This is the charging from, the, from, the, from a grid charge or a generator charge and this caps it. So in fact, you could actually set this to actually be the same as 50 amps. So if you want to change this and this to 50 amps, not a problem. That's a, if it's a single cell, if it's a double cell, you can go to the limit of the inverter. The other set, setting here is your shutdown voltage, your low battery voltage and your restart voltage. And these are just set at random. Understand the three different things. The shutdown voltage is the voltage of which, or the percentage, if you're using a voltage, if you're using an AGM, it might be a voltage. If it has got good communications off the battery, it's a percentage. 
That is the percentage where the battery reaches for the inverter to shut down. But one thing, it doesn't completely shut down. It goes into a standby mode. It stops outputting voltage. The inverter itself switches off, but the system will continue running. At about 15%, there's probably enough power to keep the system running for about maybe 20 hours until the sun comes up. It will eventually deplete and the battery will drop lower and it will hit the, the, the BMS will come in the battery and it will completely shut down. So don't set that too low because if you do go to a complete shutdown on the battery, then you may have a problem to reactivate the battery. And some batteries have issues when you have, depending on the cells and depending on the battery configuration, whether you've got to react, how to reactivate it, maybe active battery will bring it up slowly. Some BMS is completely cut, and it means you've got to remove the battery and go to the service center to actually, re or, or dismantle the battery to actually re reboot it. Low battery, that is a bleeper. Basically, if you hate that point, it's just giving you a pre-warning. Beep, 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 beep. That's all it does, nothing else. Just to tell you the low battery is going to come on. And then, of course, the final setting is the reset. That is the hysteresis value between the hysteresis, between the shutdown and the restart, the hysteresis there. And if you see there, I've got one at 19 and one at 10. And that means I've got 9% hysteresis between the two. That's what that is. So it's very simple. Let's look at the next setting, grid setting. Most applications, you've got your high, your low. You, you, this one is quite a wide bandwidth. You don't really need such wide. If you're operating in the UK, it, it's quite stable unless you're in a particular rural area. So here, I'll put this very, very wide, 269191. Here's the frequency, the two, the two, the, the, the upper and the lower. Um, and this is the output voltage. This is the voltage which the, which the inverter outputs Remember something, when the inverter goes, if the voltage goes above the set voltage here, um, so if you're setting up and maybe you've gone to default and it may be set to zero, so be very careful, always check this. Check it before you install it or before you switch it on, connect it to the main, main grid. Because if the inverter, if these, if these are out of spec, it won't work. And often people have an issue and they don't realize that the, the voltage has been set slightly too high or slightly too low and the system doesn't work. And that's quite an important feature. So just be aware of that. Um, most of these other settings, you've got the grid connect at the time. Normally that's 60 seconds. Again, we've just been using this um, for a particular function. Here, we've also got an option for the generic standard and there are different standards that the unit can operate. And we, we have the unit can set to the Irish standard and various other standards. So this is what this is set to. So let's come out of that. Um, go back onto, to, I won't use system mode. System mode is actually the controller. So the controller is the center of the inverter, how it works. I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna do sort of the next section of the videos, part three, which I'll talk about just the controller and explaining it, because this always confuses people. So I'll discuss this on the part three, which is the controller, which is a completely separate thing. Don't worry too much about it. One thing I'll finish on, and I'll just explain, is one of the things you have is, well, two of the most important parts of the initial menu for your initial setup is when you connect here, look here, this is lithium battery. And in fact, there's no batteries connecting here and you see this is just rubbish. And in fact, if I've got one here, this one's set up on here, and this one's got communication with the battery. And you'll see there's nice communication. It's showing the battery voltage, SOC, state of charge. You have other things called state of health. And this is showing everything. It's all nice. And if when I press that battery connection, I only see this, then you're gonna get problems. You're gonna get absolute problems everywhere. The, the thing's not gonna function and just give up unless you're gonna use it as an AGM battery. So it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. Um, the other thing is I'll talk about fault codes here. And you see there's lots of fault codes on here. Be, be aware the fault code doesn't mean the inverter's faulty. People say, oh, it's coming with fault code. It must be faulty, gonna take it back. <laughs> absolutely does not mean the inverter's faulty. The inverter's monitoring your whole system. It's checking the solar panels are safe. It's checking any earth leakages. It's checking anything on the solar panel. It's checking the, the grid. It's checking absolutely everything. Because if something, if it detects a fault somewhere along the line, it will shut down, absolutely shut down. If you've got a problem with the battery management system and it's not communicating, and if you're in parallel, first thing it'll do, it'll drop out the paralleling system and it will shut down. 
So the fault guide is a diagnostic tool to help you and to understand the problems. We've actually just added it a little bit on, on, the, uh, on the main menu, and this doesn't show it now, but on the main menu here, if we've got a fault, it will actually show, and there's nothing, because these are both clear of any major fault, but it will actually show on there and explain what the fault is, but the fault guide is there to help you and there to assist you. So I hope um, that's useful. I'm gonna continue with this series. I'm gonna, so tomorrow, I'll start looking at understanding the system controller and what the system controller is. And hopefully, by the time you follow these videos and understand a little bit about it, and play around with it, and, and the, the, the product's great. The product's amazing. And please, 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 because I keep getting told the same thing, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I never say subscribe, and I'm getting told, hey, why do you say this? I apologize, I should always say subscribe. So please subscribe to the channel, and we will continue this series. I keep saying tomorrow, tomorrow is uh, Saturday, so it won't be tomorrow, it'll be on Monday. So we'll carry on Monday, and we'll focus on the other parts. Thanks for watching.